Hi there. Welcome to Aaron's Wine Talk. This is wine number 15. And, uh, well, I must say, it is a nice, refreshing white wine from Italy, from the northern part. Precisely, it is northeastern Italy. And this wine is labelled as Athens. Athens is uh, a family surname. It was originating from the 1100s, very, very historical, in, within Furili Venezia Giulia. And uh, it was represented by a count, Count Douglas Athens. And uh, there is records and uh, documents of uh, historical documents of ownership of land from this count, from the same family. But then, uh, Frescobaldi, which is a very, very renowned um, uh, wine producer, especially in Tuscany, um, which we're going to taste their Nipozzano very, very soon, a fantastic Chianti Classico Reserva. They bought this estate, this beautiful estate, in this beautiful landscaped land of Friuli Venezia Giulia. It's very close to Gorizia, west of Gorizia, um, to the south part of Friuli Venezia Giulia, in an area called Collio. So it's very, very close to those areas with different uh, soil structures. So this wine has a historic name, but it is also historic with the grape Ribolla Gialla. There are also uh, documents saying that this grape variety, which was also originating in Greece, um, were plantings recorded in 1100s. But then these plants, these vines were planted in about 2001. So the vines are, are about 2018 vintage, so the vines are 17 years old. Today, the vines have 19 years old. We know that with vine age, the wine will have much more quality and less yield amount of grapes, but the quality will be fantastic. So with time, this wine will even get much, much, much better in quality. The grape is Ribolla Gialla. The region is Friuli Venezia Giulia. Atems is the surname, 2018 vintage, 12.5% alcohol. Um, and it is uh, designated as IGT, Indicazione Geografica Tipica, meaning it is one of the permitted grapes for the IGT range, which is not called, called DOC, but it doesn't mean that the wine is of low quality. It just means that the wine is designated as DOC, as IGT, because it satisfies those type of regulations. DOC is literally for Tokai Frugliano, uh, which is a type of white grape variety, fantastic quality from Collio, from Gorizia, and the Colli Orientali dei Frulli. Colli means hills, so the place is very, very hilly. It is untouched, unspoiled countryside, fantastic uh, landscape for viticulture and vine growing, literally disease-free, amazing. The climate is just perfect. Not too hot in summer, winters are cold but not extreme cold, and that is one of the microclimatic features for this style of wines. There are many grape varieties planted which are indigenous to Friuli Venezia Giulia, Tocor Friuliano, Ribolla Gialla, Schioppettino, uh, Re Fosco, which is a black grape variety. Um, and there are many, many, many more. It's amazing what, um, what type of wines they can make. They make amazing Cabernet Franc wines, red wines which are so fragrant in quality thanks to their cool climate style. And they also have the plantings of international grape varieties like Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, but Cabernet Franc is definitely something to taste in the area. Let's not get uh, uh, in, out of control of this. Let's talk on this white grape Ribolla Gialla. The climate here, the, uh, the, uh, let's say the color is very pale, as you can see, intensity, and very greenish in color. Two years old and it's still green, that means that wine can go further on, but not too long. Um, we will see that on the nose, on the palate. But that is coming from their coolness of climate. The climatic features is what we call temperature fluctuations. Yes, during the day it's quite warm, and during the night the temperature literally falls down. And that fluctuation of temperature gives a high journal range. And it's very important for an aromatic grape like Ribolla Gialla. So you get aromatic, florid characters coming in, fragrant characters, and quite herbaceous and grassy. And that is why, that is one of the main effects 
Also, you've got the Adriatic Sea, and the Adriatic Sea gives very good sunlight to the area. Yes, there is Gorizia province touching the Adriatic Sea, and this area, the vineyards, are in the plains within 15 kilometers from the Adriatic Sea. And therefore, the sunlight rays are just enough uh, in order to give quality to the vines and the ripeness of the fruit character, just enough to give 12.5% alcohol. Uh, not high alcohol, this wine is quite low alcohol, but high in uh, acidity. Um, uh, another climatic feature is the eastern breezes that come from the area, and those eastern breezes help to dissipate all the clouds in the area, so there is no cloud cover, so the sun rays easily settle on the vines, they are not protected from any clouds, so there is literally lack of fungal diseases. There's no grey rot. Grey rot is literally minimal. You can use organic viticulture in this area thanks to this climatic feature. The amount of rain in winter is just sufficient, about 1,200 millimeters per year, just sufficient to give you enough water reserves for the hot summer months. Summer temperatures reach 30 degrees, just enough to give you the quality that you need and the ripeness of the fruit, even for the black grapes. Not too hot summers but beautiful breezes coming from the east as well that help moderate the temperatures from the Adriatic Sea. Um, uh, and the soil. The soil is very loamy and alluvial. Alluvial is based on sand, stony in character, giving very good drainage quality. And uh, loam is based, based on clay. It's quite on the plains, the area. A bit of hills and plains but literally it is drenched with heat and sunlight, especially during the summer. The grapes are picked in end of September, beginning October. So you have quite a late harvest grape, but not too late because the levels of sugar for Ribolla Gialla is not easy to achieve. So you need to pick them a bit later in order to have that good sugar level of alcohol of 12.5%. Um, well, upon arrival, the Ribola Jalla grapes are uh, pressed, the juice comes out, they allow it to rest for about two days, 48 hours, and they clarify it, and then they ferment it in stainless steel tanks. And that is where you can control the temperature during fermentation. It is fermented at about 15 degrees, and a low temperature fermentation is important in order to extract an aromatic character and a fantastic level of mouth-watering acidity. If you use higher temperatures, you can ruin the style of wine. So the winemaker knows what, the, what he or she is doing. Yeah, definitely this is something which is very important in the style of wine. That grassiness and herbaceousness coming out thanks to a low temperature fermentation. It keeps the freshness uh, in the wine. When the wine is ready, the wine matures on the leaves for about four months. The sediment, the dead yeast, yes, they don't clarify it totally after fermentation. The yeast dies, it forms the sediment, and it rests with the wine. So you get that slight bready texture in the wine that leaves that sediment aroma that helps to increase the texture of the wine. Normally, Ribolla Gialla will be a light-bodied wine, and one of the ways of increasing its texture and concentration will be maturation on the lees. Um, normally, you can use lees airing, batonnage, but when you leave them just settling in, they just didn't want so much affection of bread characters. And then the wine is bottled and ready for sale. There's no oak to be used for this wine, because oak will mask the character and the aromatic and floral character of this wine. Let us give a nice tasting note on appearance, nose and palate. We have here a pale intensity, so this represents a cool climate, ladies and gentlemen, look how green it is. One of the greenest wines I've seen. This is my first time tasting Ribolla Gialla. Never tasted before. And uh, I must say, I was quite impressed upon its quality. It's a mid-price style of wine, 12, 13, 14 euros a bottle. Uh, not that too expensive. And this wine is imported by Charles Grech. Uh, Alberto Bafumi, you know, he's worked with Charles Grech and he really considered this wine to be a fantastic, refreshing white wine. And I do agree with him on this, on this part. The legs are very short, as you can see. 
Yes, they go down very, very fast on the sides of the glass. You can see them there. Yeah, that represents a cold climate. And then we get the nose. Ah, that herbaceousness, ladies and gentlemen, grassiness, rucola, um, lettuce leaves, fantastic with a grassy salad. Wow, vegetal asparagus I get. I really consider it like a Sauvignon Blanc. I would never guess this grape in a blind wine tasting session. Impossible to guess Ribola Gialla. But the next bet would be definitely Sauvignon Blanc. Why? You get that gooseberry aroma of green fruit. A gooseberry is like a, a berry, a grape berry, but it's oval in shape with a stem on the side. It tastes like the acidity of an apple and the taste of a grape. And it smells literally of gooseberries. There is a bit of nuttiness coming in, almonds, hazelnuts, and this wine is gonna gain tertiary characteristics of nuttiness with age, which will replace the fruit character. I get grapefruit a lot. Why, with a grapefruit dressing in a salad, it would be amazing. Limes, extreme lime character. Green apple, Granny Smith. Ripe pears, just like pears, I do get. And funny enough, I get avocado. Yes, an avocado. Cut the avocado, smell it, and Literally, you have a fantastic combination. So with avocado dishes, it would be literally a fantastic match with salads, with green salads, asparagus, even artichoke, and probably even with fish, especially with a grapefruit dressing or a lemon dressing or even limes, uh, fresh limes uh, in the sauce with the fish. Okay, let's give a nice uh, tasting note on the palate. Wow, it's dry, bone dry, there's no amount of sweetness in the wine, quite light in body. Maybe the best bet would be a medium minus body, yeah, because of the texture increased by the maturation of the leaves. The, so it doesn't match a heavy dish, it will match definitely a light textured dish. The finish is quite medium plus, it's still there. Grossiness, herbaceousness, gooseberry character. There is also a bit of florality coming in, like roses, yeah, coming in. Uh, a bit of honeysuckle coming in. Even on the nose, we have that present, quite floral character, but it's even present on the palate. Gooseberries, I get that savory, umami taste of avocado coming in, and fantastic um, uh, medium plus intensity i think that is on the high side as well as a conclusion i think this wine is a very good ribola gialla quite interesting quite different it can age for another three years easily in the bottle probably more uh, maybe i'm underestimating it but I, I would think that this wine would age in all five years so from 2018 this would go up to 2023 so perfect Another three years from today, 2020, will be just fine. I hope you enjoyed wine number 15. We will soon go to wine number 16. And thank you, Charles Greg Alberto, for the style of uh, Ribo La Gialla, which I think gave a very good feedback and education to the general public. I hope you are finding these sessions interesting. Thank you very much.